watching the Jonathan Desvernay Gospel Channel. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. Sometimes the Father just needs to talk. I, I don't know whether we're going to run up and down the aisle tonight and shout or not. But I have a fatherly message I want to give to you on tonight. I'm kind of tired of seeing us in the blogs and kind of tired about reading about us on the internet. And some things we may not have said enough about. So I just want to be father on tonight. Just say, go ahead, father. I'm going to preach tonight on the subject why adultery and fornication are wrong. Uh, would you say that after me, please? Why adultery and fornication are wrong. The Gospel of John, please. Now, if you don't pray with me, then I'm going to think you don't agree with me. The Gospel of John, chapter 7, verse 53. My daughter, Kimberly, in Los Angeles is also watching us on air. John 7, 53. And everyone went to his own house, but Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Early in the morning he came again into the temple and all the people came to him and he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and Pharisees brought to him a woman caught in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded that such should be stoned. What do you say? This they said, testing him, that they might have something of which to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and wrote on the ground with his finger, as though he did not hear. And when they continued asking him, he raised himself up and said to them, He who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Then those who heard it, being convicted by their conscience, went out one by one, beginning with the oldest, even to the last. And Jesus was left alone. And the woman standing in the midst, when Jesus had raised himself up and saw no one but the woman, he said to her, Woman, where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? And she said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. God has every right to give us commandments. He made us. He sustains us. He has provided for us. We belong to him. Most important of all, he loves us. And he wants us to have abundant life. His commandments are not made to deprive us or to torture us or to make us miserable. His commandments are given to enrich lives and to give life a context in which happiness and fulfillment are possible. Not only does God love us, God is infinitely wise. And he focuses his wisdom on guiding us toward the most fulfilling pathway for our lives. God ordained sex. Sex 
is the creation of God. Sex itself is not evil. It is an overwhelmingly positive force. Let the church say amen. amen. It is contributed to the good of every aspect of human existence. God ordained sex for the propagation of the human race and as an expression of love between a husband and a wife. Tell your neighbor he said a husband and a wife. Marriage is a spiritual union ordained by God. And sex is the highest expression of that union. It is reserved for that union and it is restricted to that union. Anything other than that defiles the sanctity of marriage and the sanctity of the home. By saying to the woman, go and sin no more, Jesus leaves no doubt regarding the nature of the act of adultery. It is a sin. It was sin not only for this woman, <coughs> it was also sin for the man that they did not bring. They should have brought him too. It was a sin for him and her. It was also a sin for many of those who had the rocks in their hands because some of them had done the same thing. This is why they dropped their rocks and walked away. Tell your neighbor, drop your rock. Adultery is the commission of an act of sex by a married person with someone other than their spouse. And the Bible says in Exodus 20 and 14, you shall not commit adultery. Fornication is the commission of an act of sex by a single or unmarried person. And the Bible says in Ephesians 5 and 3, but fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as is fitting for our saints. And then in verse 6 he says, Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Y'all don't mind if I be the father tonight, will you? Let me start by saying we're discussing one of the most volatile, explosive, potent areas of inquiry known to humanity. The sex drive is a powerful, forceful drive. God placed within us appetites, impulses, and drives that provide for our survival. I think immediately of hunger and thirst, the need to breathe. Hunger and thirst drive men and animals to seek and consume food and water necessary to their survival. I met people whose lives and health were jeopardized because they had lost their appetite. The sexual drive was not given to assure our personal, individual survival. Say to your neighbor, the sexual drive was not given to assure our personal, individual survival. No, that, that's not why we have that. It's rather the survival of the species the survival of the group for which the sex drive was given. It assures conception and reproduction of descendants. It's not for individual health. It's not for individual survival. 
Nobody dies or gets sick because of sex deprivation. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. You can live all your life and for great parts of your life without sex and you'll be very fulfilled, very healthy, very happy. You might not want to live your life without it, but you can live. Are you all awake? <laughs> We're designed physically for sexual involvement and for reproduction. Some people act as though that's all we are designed for. But that's not all we're designed for. We're designed for some other things, but one of the things we're designed for is sexual involvement, reproduction. There's infinitely more to life than our sexual natures. But though one can live very, very effectively without sex, and though life is much more than sex, our sensuality exerts a very powerful influence on all of us. The sex drive is a very forceful and influential power in most, if not all, of our lives. And it plays a prominent role in the entire animal world. Animals fight one another over sexual access. Animals forego food and drink to pursue sexual involvement. Some animals give their very lives in the very act of procreation. It's a forceful drive. The drone or the male bee has sex one time and dies. The male spider or the male praying mantis frequently is killed by the female during the sexual act or just after the sexual act. But even though that's true, they still pursue sexual involvement. On the human level, wars have been fought and lives have been lost and fortunes have been surrendered and careers have been wrecked and marriages and families have been disrupted by one kind of sexual pursuit or another. It is a forceful drive. And it is significant in its impact because the sex act is related to the creation of new life. Babies who grow into adults are conceived as a result of the sex act. The Einsteins of the world, the Hitlers of the world, the Apostle Pauls of the world. Everybody sitting here in this room tonight was conceived and born as a result of a sexual act. Sexual impulses are very powerful. And every society, every society has had to develop rules and controls regarding the expression of human sexuality laws and limits and constraints have been devised in all civil societies to direct and control, number one, the sexual drive. They're given to protect, number one, the individual, to protect minors, to protect the mentally retarded against rape, to require mutual consent, Laws have been passed, secondly, to protect public sensibilities. Offensive behavior like public sexual activity, exhibitionism, and of course, not too many of those are in effect in the U.S. right now. Laws against sexual solicitation. These things are prohibited by the laws of many civil societies. And third, laws are passed to set moral standards. Does anybody know we need some moral standards in the world today? Laws that prohibit incest, prostitution, nudity, sexual contact with animals, and etc. Society has to get involved because everyone agrees that human sexuality must to one degree or another degree be controlled and be restrained. You got heterosexual 
homosexuals, bisexuals, trisexuals. Somebody want to know what are trisexuals? Trisexuals are the ones who will try anything. There's some folk who like to have sex with dead bodies. Folk who like to kill people during or after the sexual act. 22-year-old Elliot Roger, UC Santa Barbara student on Friday, May 23rd, killed six people and wounded 13 people because the girls refused to give him the sex he thought he deserved. You don't deserve sex. Am I all right, bishops? Everybody has some point, a limit, beyond which they don't feel people should go. A point or a limit in which they feel the government or somebody ought to intervene. No matter what they do, there's something they don't want anybody else to do to them or to anybody they love. Everybody, even the most low down or down low people alive, agree that, that some kind of limit must be imposed on sexual behavior. Will you repeat that after me, please? Some kind of limit must be imposed on sexual behavior. Are you all all right if I just talk to you? I'm almost halfway through. We are physical beings. But not only are we physical beings, we are intellectual beings. We've got the capacity to think and to reason about what we are to do and to evaluate actions from a logical perspective. Not only are we physical and intellectual beings, we are moral beings who evaluate our behavior in terms of what's good and what's bad, what's right and what's wrong. And then finally, we are spiritual beings who are aware of God and who are related to God. We are conscious of the fact that we've got to seek God and please God, and our lives must conform to the will of God. Why does God prohibit fornication and adultery? Why are extramarital and premarital sexual relations wrong? Number one, they're wrong, because God's plan and God's will for his people are sexual relations between a man and a woman who are married to one another. Say it after me, please. God's plan and God's will for his people are sexual relations between a man and a woman who are married to one another. If you believe it's right, clap your hand. Genesis 2.21, and the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept and took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman, and he brought her to the man. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore, a man will leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh, and they were both naked, and the man and his wife were not ashamed. Mm -hmm. It's God's will. Tell somebody it's God's will. Secondly, adultery and fornication are wrong because children should be legitimately born into a home where the parents are married to one another, loving one another, caring for one another and guiding and disciplining the children. Ephesians 6, 1 says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with the promise that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. Fathers, do not exasperate your children instead. Bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. What could be more exasperating than being forsaken and rejected and without a father? 
being placed in a totally unpredictable home situation. The goal, the standard, the objective must be one father, one mother, married to one another for life. Men, if you've got a son or a daughter anywhere on the face of the earth, even if you are not married to the lady by whom the child was born, don't you let that child grow up without your help. Don't you let that child grow up without your influence. Don't leave some poor lady somewhere by herself trying to raise the child that has your blood running in his veins. Look at somebody and tell them he's right. Hallelujah. Can I teach tonight? Yes. Extramarital and premarital sexual relations are wrong because they lead to poverty and they lead to economic ruin. In the black community, things have reached critical and alarming levels. A married mother and father team lead only 48% of black households. There's a husband and a wife in only 48% of black households. A single individual leads 52% of black families. 58% of black female-headed families live in poverty, living on less than $25,000 a year. 30% of black children live in poverty. From 1985 to 2001, 60 to 70% of the children born in the black community were born to single young ladies. 60 to 70% of the children born in the black community are born to single young ladies. Is it any wonder that there are more than 800,000 young black men in jail. 40% of the jail population and only 12% of the population of the nation. Adultery and fornication lead to poverty because one man can take care of one family better than he can take care of two, three, or four families. Intact families can accumulate wealth. Intact families can pass wealth down from generation to generation. Fooling around causes you to waste a whole lot of money. Somebody ought to say amen. You hardly make enough money for yourself. And you're, how, how are you going to take care of yourself, your family, and now you're trying to support two or three other ladies on the side? You can't do it. Your bills are going unpaid. Your family needs are unmet. You're not prepared to help your children go to college. You're acting like a big man with a whole lot of money. But what you don't know is that the ladies are laughing at you. Lord, I'm just saying what you told me to say. Tonight. Second Corinthians 12 and 14 says, For the children ought not to lay up for the parents but the parents for the children. Proverbs 13 and 22 says, a good man, <laughs> a good man, if, you, if you're a good man, you can do this. A good man leaves an inheritance, not only to his children, but to his children's children. But the wealth of the sinner is stored up for the righteous. Premarital and extramarital sex is wrong because they significantly are responsible for the epidemic of abortions in our nation and in the world. According to the Guttmacher Institute, 56 million legal abortions have taken place in the United States since 1973, Roe versus Wade. 56 million babies have been murdered. Black women, according to the statistics, are almost four times as likely to have an abortion as a white woman. And almost 65 of those who have had abortions have never been married. 
you're killing a human being. It's a human being from the moment it's conceived. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let me read you three scriptures. Jeremiah 1, 5. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you and ordained you a prophet to the nation. Luke 1, 15. He shall be great in the sight of God and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will also be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb. Look at your name and say, Holy Ghost filled fetus. Luke 1, 41, and it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary that the baby leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. God knows our children before they are born. God deals with our children before they are born. A fetus is more than just a clump of tissue and cells. A fetus is human life, and abortion is murder. <clears throat> Lord, help me preach tonight. Extramarital and premarital sex are wrong because they alone are responsible for the spread of a variety of sexually transmitted diseases, STZ, STDs, sexually transmitted diseases. Hmm. May I tell you that black folk represent 50% of all the new HIV cases in our nation today. Black men are almost nine times more likely than white men are to have AIDS. Black women are 23 times more likely than white women to have AIDS. AIDS especially impacts the homosexual population, those who are on the so-called down low. A major factor in the spread of AIDS to so many women. 36 million people have died of AIDS. 35 million are living with AIDS, even now. 65 million Americans are afflicted with various forms of sexually transmitted diseases and another 15 million become infected with one or more STDs every year. AIDS is an STD. Recreational sex, having a good time can be very deadly. I said it can be deadly. Even from a worldly point of view, you can't fool around, period. Lord, give me some strength tonight. Extramarital sex is wrong. Premarital sex is wrong because they require time and waste time that could be used otherwise. I said, sin takes time. Will you tell your neighbor, sin takes time. It's wasteful and counterproductive to live a sinful life. It takes time to set sin up. It takes time to get sin done. It takes time to cover sin up. It takes time to clean sin up. And every minute you spend sinning is the minute you could have spent moving toward your real purpose in life. Every minute you spend sinning is the minute you could have spent doing something good and doing something productive. Get busy about something good. Get your mind focused on something good. Get in college, take some courses, improve yourself. Get down to business spiritually. Every minute you spend sinning is the minute you could have spent building yourself up, building your heart, your mind, helping your children, lifting your spouse, lifting the people who are around you. Every minute you spend sinning requires minutes and hours and days and years trying to get what you messed up by your sin straight after you've committed the sin. Some people will never get things straight. Never get it straight. Never get it straight. You'll live your life with the mess you made in that one moment of disobedience to the word of God. Just because the world is obsessed with sex does not mean the saints have to be obsessed with sex. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sexual involvement outside of marriage is wrong because that's not what we expect from the people who are important to us. 
even the lowest down sexually illicit individual wants his wife to treat him right. Don't want nobody to mess with his daughter. Wants his son to be responsible in the way everybody wants his mama to be modest and right. He might be as low down and down low as he can be. But he, he wants mama to behave. He wants his wife to behave. He wants every, and listen, if you want everybody else in your life to behave, what you want from them is what you ought to give to them. And the Bible says a man will reap what he sows. Am I preaching tonight? Hallelujah. Sexual involvement outside of marriage is wrong. Because the authorities suggest that attachment results from sexual intercourse. Look at your neighbor and say, attachment results from sexual involvement. People get bonded. Uh huh. What may be something, nothing for one is everything for the other. And a person can be wounded and shattered and handicapped for life by somebody who walks casually into their lives sexually and then walks out of their lives without commitment and without respect. The end of a relationship in which they should not have been in the first place have devastated many, many people. It's wrong because somebody always gets hurt. Has anybody in here ever been hurt? Sexual immorality is wrong because it breaks up marriages and it devastates families. It exposes everyone, including the transgressor, to much pain and to much distress. Sexual involvement outside of marriage causes scandal. Everybody say scandal. Causes a disgrace and a shadow to be thrown over the church when so-called saints are involved in immorality. It weakens our witness because they want to know why should we do what you tell us to do when it doesn't seem you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Somebody ought to say, help us, Lord. If you love God, if you love people, you will live in such a way as to respect everybody that you meet and to bring no pain into their lives. How dare you hurt somebody for whom Jesus died? How dare you use somebody when God has a destiny for their lives? How dare you use somebody whom God loves and for whom Jesus died for your own advantage and own gratification? Hallelujah. Compassion and godly love ought to encourage you if you will not, in a, uh, are not in a position to marry somebody, not to complicate their lives by your sexual involvement. Casual sex is wrong because the termination of virginity should be assigned to a committed, responsible person to whom one is married. Virginity should not be given to any dude or dudess that comes by. Marriage means much more when it's exclusive to the people who are involved in it. And Hebrews 15, 13, and 4 says, Marriage is honorable among all, and the bed undefiled. But fornicators and adulterers, God will judge. I'm trying to get through here now. Sexual immorality is wrong because you, once you cross the line, it's hard to stop, and it's hard to get out of that situation in which you've gotten yourself. Some people have died trying to get out. Some people have been killed trying to get out. Some people have been repeatedly entangled again and again, even while they were trying to get out. If you have started, the only thing you can do is say, Lord, forgive me. 
Give me another chance. Give me another start. This is what Jesus said to the poor woman in the text that we read tonight. You have sinned. You have done wrong. And your wrong has opened this door of attack against you. So many people involved in sin find that their mind and their spirit and their soul are crying out for righteousness. The burden of guilt is too heavy for you to bear. You feel bad about what you're involved in. You worry about getting caught. You hope you won't reap what you sow. Hallelujah. You feel that the stones of judgment are about to fall down on you. But Jesus said to the woman, you are guilty. But the sentence is way. The condemnation is way. The judgment is way. Go and sin no more. Tell your neighbor the judgment is way. The penalty is lifted. Isaiah said, surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Surely we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace is upon him and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, but the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Will you tell three folk it's on Jesus? It's on Jesus. It's on Jesus. Oh, bless the name of God. We do not have a high priest who cannot be touched by the feeling of our infirmities. But he was in all points tempted just like we are. Tell your neighbor, Jesus was tempted just like we are, yet without sin. Oh, bless the name of God. Therefore, we can come boldly, boldly to the throne of grace and find mercy and grace to help in the time of need. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Have you found grace to help? Have you found mercy in your time of need? No temptation taken you except that is common to man. But God is faithful. Will you tell somebody God is faithful? He's faithful when you fail. He's faithful when you endure trials. He's faithful when the burden hangs heavy upon your head and the Bible says he will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able but he will with the temptation make a way of escape no matter what you're going through temptations may come like fiery trials but God is faithful he's faithful and he'll bring you out tell your neighbor he's faithful he'll bring you over and he'll bring you out. Oh, yes, he will. Hallelujah. Let's close by saying that God has for you something is better than you can ever find on your own. Tell your neighbor, God has something for you that's better than you can ever find on your own. Joseph was a dreamer. Joseph was a man of destiny. He pursued the dreams that God brought to him. But on his way to his dream, his brothers hated him and his brothers sold him into slavery. On his way to his dream, he was bought by a man by the name of Potiphar. On his way to his dream, he served Potiphar with all that he had within him. He did his best. And the Bible says the Lord was with Joseph. Hallelujah. Everything he touched prospered and was elevated. The Lord blessed Potiphar 
beyond his highest imagination and he turned over everything to Joseph. Now Potiphar's wife had been around all the time and Joseph had been around for a long time but she never noticed him until he was in charge. She never noticed him until he was approaching his destiny. And listen, the devil never bothers you until God is getting ready to bless you. The devil never stops you until God is ready to take you higher. Are you going through a trial? Are you being tempted? Are you being confronted by more than you can handle? It's because God has something better in store for you. Will you tell somebody God has something better in store for you? When he was at the top in Potiphar's house, Potiphar's wife came by and said, Joseph, let's go to bed together. And Joseph said, no, everything that I have, everything that I've done has been given to me by Potiphar. God has blessed me in this house and I can touch and deal with everything in the house except you because you're his wife. He went on about his business, but the Bible says every day she came to Joseph and said, let's make love. Let's go to bed together. But Joseph said no. Finally, one day he came through the house. Potiphar's wife grabbed him and began to pull him toward the bed. He wiggled out of his coat and the Bible says he ran and got out of the house. Tell your neighbor sometime you're going to have to run to give God glory. You're going to have to run to keep your salvation. But whatever you've got to do to stay holy, do it in the name of Jesus. Tell your neighbor whatever you've got to do to stay holy, do it in the name of Jesus. Hold on. Call on God. Pray. Put your hand in God's hand and say, Lord, I'm going to need your help. Lord, I'm going to need your power. Lord, help me. Oh, help me. Lift up your hand and say, Lord, help us. Say it again, Lord, help us. Help us live holy. Lord, help us to hold up the light. Lord, help us to be faithful. Oh, oh Lord, help us. Lift up your hand and say, help me. Yes. Yes. Oh. Oh, bless his name. Potiphar's wife grabbed his garment and then called for the men around the house said see what this Hebrew has done come up in my house trying to rape me she told her husband that's what happened he came up on me tried to rape me part of him came angry but not very angry because normally one would expect that Joseph would have been killed immediately there's no way Potiphar would have let him live. But Potiphar must have been a smart man. He must have known something about the woman that he was living with. So he said, put him in the king's prison. Put him in the plush prison. I've got to deal with it, but there's something wrong here. There's something going on. Listen, when you stand up for God, you may get in trouble, but God will go in to that trouble with you and God will bring you out. While he was in jail, that was where God wanted him to be because in jail, he began to go higher and higher and higher. After a while, he was in charge. After a while, the Pharaoh himself had a dream and somebody remembered, Joseph has the Holy Ghost. Joseph is an interpreter of dreams. Go get Joseph. Joseph came before the Pharaoh and interpreted the Pharaoh's dream. The Pharaoh put Joseph in charge. Joseph became the vice president 
of all of Egypt. And then he sat down and wrote a letter to Potiphar's wife. And he said, look where I am now. How you like me now? Tell your neighbor, how do you like me now? God will bring you over. God will. Oh, yes, he will. Grab your neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, if you hold on, God will. God will bring you out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God has been too good to us for us to let him down. God has done too much for us for us not to serve him with all of our heart. God has lifted us too high for us not to give him praise. Tell your neighbor, give him praise. Give him praise. If an Islamic terrorist, if an worshiper of Allah, if one who is a Muslim will tie a bomb to his body, tie a bomb to his body, put a bomb in a car or in a truck, get on an airplane, hallelujah, and drive that airplane into a skyscraper, drive that car into a building and kill hundreds of folk and kill himself. If he loves Allah enough to die for Allah, you ought to love God enough to live for God. You ought to love him enough to serve him and to praise him and to do his will. The Bible says, if my people that are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn, tell two people it's time to turn, turn from their wicked way. Then will I hear from heaven, I'll forgive their sin, I'll heal their land. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The land needs healing, the world needs healing. Men among men, women among women, the world needs to be healed. Sexual deviants are doing their damage everywhere they go and the world needs to be healed. Sin is seeping across our nation and the Congress is passing laws and the Supreme Court is making judgments that will drag us down to hell. It's time for God to work. It's time for us to reach out and say, Lord, save our nation. Lord, save our men. Lord, save our families. Lord, save our women. Lord, move in our world. Move in our lives. Move in this day. Hallelujah. Let the church say hallelujah. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Lift up your hands and praise Him. Oh, yeah. Come on and praise Him. Praise Him. Take hands to somebody. Tell them, let's go higher. Let's be faithful. Let's be holy. Let's serve the Lord. Let's give God glory. God's looking for holy people. God is getting ready. But before he can do what he's going to do, we've got to do what we need to do. And I heard the Lord say, I'm going to do a new thing. A new thing is on the way. New miracles, new blessings, new power, new height, new depth. Get ready, get ready. Hallelujah. The Lord needs some holy folk. Are there any holy folk in the house today? Are there any righteous people in the house today? Oh, bless the name of God. The Lord said, if you hold on, if you live for me, hallelujah. Don't worry about what you're going through. Jesus was a single person and he lived a celibate life. Paul was a single person and he lived a celibate life. Child of God, you can be holy, you can hold on, you can be righteous until God brings whatever he's going to bring into your life. And God is calling for some folk. 
who say, Lord, if you never bless me, if you never put me in a family, if you never give me a husband, if you never give me a wife, I'm going to love you anyhow. I'm going to say hallelujah, hallelujah, oh hallelujah, anyhow. Lift your hand and say hallelujah, 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 anyhow. Clap your hand, clap your hand, give him praise, give him honor, give him glory. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Look at your name and say the Holy Ghost. It's here right now. Tell your neighbor one more time, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit is here right now. If he's the Holy Spirit, he's the spirit of holiness. I said he's the spirit of holiness. Tell your neighbor he's the spirit of holiness. If you've got the Holy Ghost, you've got the spirit of holiness. And the power that he brings is first the power to live holy. And the Bible says you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses. You shall be righteous. You shall be holy. Lift up that hand and say, come on in. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Fill us again. Holy Ghost. Bless us again. Holy Ghost. Revive us again. Come on, get filled. Get blessed. Get anointed. Clap your hands. Call on Jesus. Praise Him. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is here right now. Tell your neighbor the Holy Ghost is in the room right now. Refining, purifying, blessing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell two people, let's go higher. Higher. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! How many of you know our world is in trouble? He said, how many of you know our world is in trouble? The Lord said, if I shut up the heavens, no rain, if I send locusts among my people, if I send pestilence, if my people will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I'll hear from heaven, I'll forgive their sin, I'll heal their land. Our land needs healing. Before I close, I want us to pray in two or three areas. I want us to bombard heaven believing that even while we stand in this room God will start turning our world around. God says I'm going to do a new thing. God says the desert is going to blossom. God said I'm going to send rivers into your wilderness. That's what God said he was going to do. All we've got to do is just pray and believe God. I want us to pray for the men of our nation, the men of our black community. I want us to pray for them. Our sons, pray for them, the men of our community. 800,000 of them in jail. That's where the husbands are. 
Where are the husbands? They in jail. Hallelujah. When I count to three, I want you to lift up your voice as if you were standing here at this pulpit and praying. I want you to believe God. I want you to call on God. Pray for the men. Pray with all your heart that God will intervene. And if we pray, we're going to see some changes taking place. Open your mouth. Pray loud. Pray so I can hear your voice as you pray. And don't stop praying until you feel the Holy Ghost has confirmed in your spirit the answer to your prayer. One, two, three. Lift up your voices, man. Come on, pray. Yes, Lord. Now, boss, you're cold. Get out of the mouth. Somebody's son, somebody's son, somebody's husband. Come on, come on, lift up your voice, lift up your voice. Bless them, bless them, save them, save them, save them, save them. Save them. Save them. Draw them. Keep the demon of homosexuality away from them. Da, 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 da. Pray, pray, pray. Among the men. Come on, praise God, Carly. Praise God. Oh, now, I want us to pray for the young ladies, especially the single young ladies in the church. Let's pray for them. Let's pray for them. Pour out your spirit just as you did before. In the name of Jesus. Pour it out, pour it out. One, two, three. Come on, focus. Pray for those young ladies. Oh God, oh God. Help us to honor them. Help us to cherish them. Help us to lift them. Help us to encourage them. Help us to bless them. Lord, intervene. Send husbands. Send, send husbands. Send strength. Send help. Send resources. Meet every need. Work miraculously in their lives. Give them miraculous promotion. Miraculous raises. In the name of Jesus. Be father. Be father. Be husband in that home. Be provider in that home. Work it out. Work it out. Come on. Call it. Call it. Call it. Do it, Jesus, do it, Jesus, do it, Jesus, do it, Jesus, do it, Jesus. Let them have more than enough, more than enough, more than enough. Let them not rely on the government, not on the county. Let them rely on you. You are a provider. You can make a way out of no way. Do it, God, do it, God, do it, God, do it, God. Come on, clap your hands and praise God. It's done in Jesus' name. It's done in Jesus' name. Look at the lady somewhere and tell her, I see you in the future. And you look much better than you look right now. One more season of prayer and then I'm through. It's time to pray for the church. I said it's time to pray for the church. We are called. We are called to minister and witness to a deeply distressed and troubled world. 
And we can't do it without holiness. We can't do it without the spirit of holiness. We can't do it without the power of God. We need God to work, move in our lives. In this season of prayer, I want you to pray until you pray through. I want you to pray in the Holy Ghost. Jude said, but evil are building up yourselves on your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying until you speak in tongues. Praying until you fall out slain under the power of God. Praying until you get your miracle. Hallelujah. When I count to three, we're going to pray for the church. God bless the church. God bless the church. One, two, three, pray. Bless it, bless it, bless it. Purified, cleansed it with the washing of water by the word. Presented unto yourself a holy church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Touch us, bless us, rebuke the devil that tries to hold us back, hinder our progress, stop our growth. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, yokes are broken, yokes are broken, captive are set free. I see, I hear the chain, I hear the chain falling. Tell somebody I hear the chain falling. I hear the chain falling. Come on, praise it. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Lift up your hands and say, it's done. It's done. I dare you to move. Start walking around. Every time you step, you're crushing the devil's head. Every time you walk, you're walking to a new level. You're moving to a new place. You're moving to a new dimension. You're receiving a new blessing. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it. Oh, yeah. Be healed, be healed, be delivered, be set free. Hallelujah. Come on, praise it. Come on, praise it. Come on and praise it. Come on and praise it. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. If you feel a need for prayer, if you need God, if you need salvation, if you need forgiveness, if you're sick and you need hands laid on you, if you need a miracle, if you're up against the wall financially and you need a financial blessing, get down here as fast as you can. The prayer warriors are waiting on you. Step out, come down in the name of Jesus. Deliverance, forgiveness, mercy is yours. God forgives you. God forgives you. Come and receive it in the name of Jesus. Come on and praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Thank you for watching the Jonathan Desvernay Gospel Channel. Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel.
keep on climbing anyway. Hanging on by your wire. You see, you guys got a plan.